So, next up is Strange Tales 108 D Story. The first one was the A Story. This is called The Iron Warrior. Were you able to find this one? I don't freaking know. Okay. I had to do a deep, like, I spent, like, 15 to 30 minutes trying to find this one. Nice. I, I eventually came across it on a Facebook page, and I was, <laughs> I was able to read it there. What the frick? <laughs> <laughs> So I guess I'm taking the reins on this one. I, I gave it a question mark for rating. Okay. So, first of all, this is starts right off the bat with Iron Man narrating it, which is really all right. bizarre. All right. So there's this dude named Mogard who is like, I'm better than Merlin, and I'm going to prove it to everyone. All right, all right. So he goes to Merlin, and he challenges him. He's like, I'm going to fight your greatest champion, and you can't use your magic. He's like, I want to prove that I'm better than you, Merlin, but you can't use your magic, and I don't want to actually fight you. That That's, makes no sense. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so Mogard fights this knight, and he's beaten. But then he's like, you had nothing to do with that because you didn't use your magic, so you didn't prove that you're better than me. Which is the exact opposite of what he just that said. That is literally the exact opposite <laughs> of what he actually... Okay. So then Merlin was like, I was using my magic. The knight's armor was empty, and I was controlling it the okay, entire time. time. And that's pretty much it. And then, like, Mogard goes crazy and loses his mind. I don't know what that issue was. What's I'm... up with these Iron Man issues, like, having nothing to do with anything? This isn't an Iron Man issue. Iron Man's not in no, the I know. issue at all. But, like, it's it's kind of like the one uh, with the sailors and, like, Vikings. <laughs> yeah. like See, but this is, from, this is still from the Human Torch Solo series. Book. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah, like... I... It's so random. Somebody would I mean, like, Merlin is, does exist yeah, in the Marvel Universe, exist so that's Marvel probably Universe, why. Probably, but, but still. Yeah, I gave it one star. I don't know really what was going on there. Okay. Well, I dropped a bullet, I guess. I don't freaking know. I mean, it was only five pages, so it really yeah, wasn't it anything. it was only five but... pages. So I was like, oh, I don't know, whatever. All right. All right. Amazing Spider-Man number two. Duel to the death with the Vulture. As you can well, What did you think of the Vulture? The appearance of the Vulture. Um... I like him here well enough. Yeah. I don't like him the more he goes on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was pretty good. This is not your Spider-Man Homecoming Vulture. No. This guy is bald. He's old. He's decrepit. I think he has arthritis. It doesn't say outright, but I, I think, think he does have arthritis. I think the reason he does this isn't it because he has like cancer or something. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, um, I, I might th I, mean, I might actually be thinking of the PS4 game, being Spider-Man. Okay, who has yeah. cancer in that one? Somebody. Does. It's it's Vulture. Is it Vulture or is yeah. it Ock? No, it's Vulture. Okay. Ock, Ock says if he joins up with him, he'll cure right. his cancer. Uh, okay. So we start out. The Vulture's doing some crimes. Yeah. And Jonah wants some pictures. Not surprising. Right. He's a mag... He's an ed He's what, owner of the magazine? Yeah. Company? So um, he obviously wants pictures. Editor-in-chief, I think, is probably... Yeah, yeah, that's the word I was looking um, for. Except, it's not the Daily Bugle. It's Now Magazine. Yes. That that changes, like, next issue or something. All right. But anyway, Peter kind of hears about the Vulture, and he's like, I might be able to make some money yeah. off of taking some pictures of this guy. Conveniently, Aunt May just gives him a camera from Uncle Ben. From Uncle Ben. Like, the night he... The day he gets home. Uh, so, the Vulture gets ready to pull off a jewel heist. Yes. And he tells all the authorities. He's like, he's taunting them. He's like, I'm gonna do this. He's like, he basically drops a, a note wrapped around a rock. Right. And drops it down their windows. He drops it in the... Burn. Police chief. Police chief. Newspaper. Newspaper. So, I think he gave it to J. Jonah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And then um, there was one other. There was one other. I can't remember. I can't remember what that one was. But, uh, so Pete gets in this costume. Yeah. And he goes to take some pictures. The vulture notices him though, and he takes him off guard and he drops him in a water tower and he flies away. But yeah, Spider-Man managed to get out. Yes. Very weirdly, I don't know if that's. I, I mean, it makes more sense than say magnets. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, he basically just. He basically goes to the bottom of the, and the then, water and then bounces up and then shoots out the top. Up. Yeah, which I think I think that works. I think that's fine. Can we can we mention though that he's a very careless superhero? In what? Oh yeah. He the reason he had to do this was because he forgot to refill his web shooters. This is true, but it builds off of it. And it does. Immediately, as soon as he goes home, he makes some more. He makes, he makes like a belt, like almost like Batman belt. Right. And he fills it with extra canisters so right. this doesn't happen again. Also, the whole reason he got caught off guard is because he was looking at the pictures he yes. just took. So, yeah. 
It's not that, like, whatever, but... But he's also, we have to remember, he's a high school student, yeah. so it, it kind of makes sense. Um, Learns from his mistakes, though. Right. And so, yeah, he does. He makes the modifications, and he goes over to sell uh, Jonah the pictures. The, cost, the pictures, yeah. And uh, Jonah's like, how did you get these? And he's like, my one requirement, never ask me that, or I won't sell you these pictures. Yep. And so, Jay, Jay, Jonah Jameson's like, obviously, all right, I'm not going to ask yeah. you. Just bring me more like right. this. So... The next day, the entire school goes out to watch this jewelry exchange. They, they kind of just they what? go just to see the vulture. Right. They want to see how he does. There's it, no basically. way the police would let that happen. They would have that shit cordoned off and like. Well, yeah, they have it cordoned off, but people obviously will wait outside of it. There's They'll no way they would inside, let anybody get that close to the thingy, though. No, it's true, but anyway, at the exchange, everybody's looking for the vulture in the sky. Yeah. So there's like he's probably he's, that's his MO. He's gonna attack yeah. in the sky, but he doesn't. He pops up from the sewers. Batman style. Right. Gets the jewels. And so Spider-Man goes to hunt him down. Yep. So they have a fight. Spider-Man manages to disable the vulture's wings, which are magnetic. Why? Is that what that was? I couldn't tell what he was holding, honestly. It was an anti-magnetic device, and the wings were magnetic, and they kind of, like, repel him off the ground. That's not how magnets work! That's not how magnets work, no. I didn't really... I didn't know, he, I just saw that thing, and then he, they both started falling, I was like, wait, what? Yeah. I thought he, like, cut a wing, I don't know, I was super confused there. Anyway, the vulture is captured, and that's the end of that. Yeah. I like this one a lot. Yeah, this one wasn't bad. I think it was strong on the whole. vulture was good. Yeah. Um, there were some issues, the magnets being the primary one for me. Yeah. There were also some conveniences where... Spider-Man just always happened to just come across the Vulture whenever he wanted to come across him. Well, the first one was, I guess, not a complete accident. He knew where to go, I guess. I, it seemed a lot of it was just kind of chance. He's always like, what a break for me. That was lucky. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, it was lucky. Now you've pointed it out, and now I'm thinking about it. So, for that reason, I'm dr- I'm not going to give it five, but I, I, I'm good with giving this four. I think I gave it a four, too, yeah. But, um, I never really... Yeah, four. Yeah, that, that was pretty. That, good. that is pretty lucky of him, I guess. Yeah, because New York City is a big place. It is a big place. Yeah. So moving right on, this is Amazing Spider-Man two still, but it's the B story. Yep. Oh boy, this one is. Uh, this, one was... this is a little bit of a rough one. The uncanny threat of the terrible oh, Tinkerer gosh. is what it is called. Tinkerer also having an appearance in Spider-Man: mm-hmm. Homecoming, I believe. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. part of the Vulture's team. He was part of the Vulture's team. Yeah, yeah. Except in this one, spoiler alert, he's an alien. Woo! <laughs> so, so, we start off and Peter is being offered a chance, a chance to work with this famous scientist. Yes. On some of his experience. Right off the bat, though, why a high school student? Well, they, re- they obviously, he, Peter goes to a good high school. He is really smart. He does a lot of stuff for the high school. He's always recognized by scientists in every... Everywhere you see Peter Parker and Spider-Man, he's always, like, recognized by really good scientists. But why did they go to a high school to check in the first place? Why not go to a college or something? Or to, like, Reed Richards, who is a professional scientist. Hey, man. Peter, cheaper for a high school student? To do it? Maybe. I don't know. Although I feel like college students would do anything for, like, two bucks just to, like... Yeah, but you can charge less for a high school student. Yeah. College, college students, they'll, like, be like... Yeah, I'll do this, but, like, you need to pay my tuition. Reed Richards, world around sciences, he'd obviously charge yeah, a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, either way. Yeah, um, but... Anyway, so they're doing some experiments. Cobwell asks... Cobwell's a professor. Yes. He, uh... Or not the professor, the scientist. Uh, he asked Peter to go pick up his radio that was being fixed by the Tinkerer. Yep. So, it's revealed here that the Tinkerer is working with some aliens... And he's putting some stuff in the radios. I think it was like... It's like spyware. other radios? I think yeah. it's like spyware or something like that. Right. So, this sets off Pete's spidey sense. Uh, but he doesn't, like, he doesn't notice it. Like, he notices the spidey sense, but he doesn't right. realize the danger. So, but then he senses it again when he's working. Yeah. So he goes, he, invest, he investigates the radio, yep. and he finds the alien device. So he goes to the Tinkerer's shop as Spider-Man. He finds out that these devices are meant to spy on the Earth authorities so that they know all their weaknesses and they can take over. Yep. Which, as far as alien plans go, that's probably the best we've seen. Although, someone else did that, too. Did and they? One of the Fantastic Four. I don't was, remember. It was the one where they, like, switched out all the authorities the, and making, like, the really bad laws. 
That was Thor. That was Thor. Yeah. Thinking about it. Yeah. Um, at this point, I know we're only sixty issues in, but like, there's just been so many alien plots that I can't keep track of any I of them anymore. Exactly so, the awesome, man. so anyway, uh, the aliens see Spidey and they have a fight. Yep. So the Tinkerer shoots a ray gun at Spider-Man. Knocks him out. Right. And they trap him in like this glass dome thing. Yeah. So the aliens release the air. They describe it as they push the air out through holes. Holes that are basically air holes. Yeah. To let the air in. But they have like... I thought they were like vacuum seal that thing. They're not. They're no, definitely they're, not. They're, 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 they're just they're, holes. They're, they're just like pushing the air so quickly out of the thing that he can't catch the air, basically. But even if that's the case, once the air is out, it'll just come back in. Yeah, but I think it's going to be, like, continuous, man. I don't... It's got to be. I don't know, Did man. Any, I don't think there's choice. any way it can push air out through air holes to the point where the other air won't come in. No, nah, yeah, I don't know how that works, but... Uh, yeah. Anyway, Spider-Man shoots his web through this holes, these yeah. holes, and then... Releases him, it hits the command panel. It re- he she fires for the button to release him. It hits it. He escapes. He takes down the tinker. Er, the, the, the panel gets destroyed. Then he takes out the tinker. Right. The panel getting destroyed lights the place on fire. Yeah. They have like a skirmish in the fire. Right. Spider Man's like, I can't breathe all the smoke and stuff. Right. It's a ca- It's they're in a cave, so the smoke doesn't really have anywhere to go. Right. So he escapes. And then it's revealed that the Tinkerer was... It was just a mask. Right. Pre- so, he's presumably also an alien. Yep. Also, we should mention the Tinkerer did not seem to get out of this fire. Spider-Man tried to save him, but it was yes. just too much smoke, and the Tinkerer wouldn't let him touch him. So, Spidey just had to get out of there. This is a weird one, but I didn't hate it too much. No. Again, it read okay. I, I gave really... it three. Yeah, I gave it three. Okay, I'm gonna do one final... Nose blow here before we before we get going. Oh my gosh. Guardians Life Adventures Part Three. As the Guardians of the Fern are repairing Arden's ship on their magical TV, Arden explains the whole scenario of why he was escaping and why his ship was crashed. Arden was escaping from an evil tyrant named Curly Q. Not very alien, but hey, whatever. And basically they had a skirmish, but Curly Q was too powerful, and he drove Arden back. And that's the end of Arden's Life Adventures, part three. Okay, so, on to Fantastic Four number 13! Yes! The Red, Red Ghost and his indescribable Super, Super Ace. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, okay. This one was throwing water. Wow, you really didn't like this I didn't, book. no, I didn't really. Not why. Okay. So, we start out, Reed nearly blows up the Bachelor building when he discovers a new rocket fuel. Yep. And this rocket fuel is powerful enough to get them to the moon. Cut to communist Russia. Woo! <laughs> this guy named the Red Ghost, although he's not named that yet. Mm. He's also about to go to the moon with his three apes, which he's trained to do some remarkable shit. Monk send monkey into space first, you know. Right. Whole ordeal stuff. Uh, so he designs the, his spaceship, though, of transparent material so the cosmic rays can pass through and give him and the apes powers. Though, cosmic rays, I feel like, can pass through anything. They yeah, pass... I don't know why you'd have to make your ship transparent. They passed through the Fantastic Four right. ship, and that was just a regular spaceship, so. Um, so the Fantastic Four launch into space. They see the Red Ghost ship. Yep. And Johnny flies over to kind of see what's going on. So they notice him, and it is revealed that the, the super apes have powers now. Yep. The gorilla has super strength. The baboon is a shapeshifter. Here's a question. When the Red Ghost figures this out, he picks up a gun, and then it changes into a baboon, and he's like, Oh no, it's a baboon! Why the <laughs> hell is he a gun? Dude, I, who, qu- why change into that of Don't all the Don't question the baboon, dude. Don't question the baboon. Uh, and then the orangutan is a magnet. <laughs> what the hell? They've gone Dude. from magnets pulling humans to a orangutan actually being a magnet. Being a magnet, dude. Most power- <sighs> powerful superpower. Anyway, magnet orangutan pushes Johnny away. Johnny oh is also God. not magnetic, but whatever. 
Iron blood, dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> no! I refuse <laughs> to believe that. Anyway, the Fantastic Four, they land on the moon in the blue area, and they discover, like, an ancient alien city, I guess. It has atmosphere, it has <clears throat> air, they, all the yin-yang, right. dude. And they see they see a house that looks inhabited, so everyone goes off to explore, except for Ben. He, yeah, he's like, Johnny flies away. Um, How do the others get there? <laughs> I don't know, but everybody goes over there, and then Ben gets run off behind. Yeah. Uh, so, Ben has a run-in with the Red Ghost. Yep. And, and the Super Apes. And the Apes. And they, they get in a fight. Fight, obviously. And it's revealed that the Red Ghost can make his body... Intangible? Yeah, 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 intangible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, they fight. Ben is about to uh, to get taken out, but... He's saved by the Watcher. First appearance of the Watcher. Yes. So if you are not familiar with him, and you may not be, because he's not—he's not really been in the MCU. He was in one scene in Guardians of the Galaxy two. Guardians of the Galaxy two, which I don't like that movie. So really? Yeah, it's one of my least favorite MCU movies. Wow. I'd say we'd get angry emails about that, but we don't get any emails, so it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I don't like that movie. But yeah, he's the guy that Stan Lee is chilling out with. Um, yeah, because throughout the entire thing, it's always questioned whether Stan, there's always a theory whether Stan Lee was a watcher. Right. And they, like, just confirmed it. They just confirmed it, basically, yeah. So, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, though, the watchers are basically this race of aliens who just watch all the big events of the universe. Yeah. And they kind of write it down and they, they, like, take it for history. Um,. They're supposed to not interfere, but Uatu, who is this this watcher, he fucking interferes every time he shows up. <laughs> I don't think I've ever read a comic where Uatu, the watcher, is involved, and he doesn't in, interfere. In, yeah. And he tries to pass it off. He's like, I'm not interfering. I'm just telling you about this thing, and if you just happen to take it, I've left it out in the open... And I'm going to look the other way, and I won't get mad if you take it. So, uh, anyway, he orders the Fantastic Four and the Red Ghost and his apes to fight it out as champions of the United States and Russia so as to prevent a large-scale war on the moon, which is where the Watcher currently lives. Yeah. Even that, though, that's completely interfering. Eh. Uh, no, that definitely is. It is completely that interfering, is. yeah. Um, so... Ben is like, I'll fight you right now, Red Ghost. Let's do it. But then Ben uses his stretchy arms to grab him and pull him back over to the Watcher's house. So they all explore the Watcher's house, yeah. and then they get teleported to an arena to fight the Red Ghost and the apes. They all fight. The Fantastic Four are taken down, and Sue is captured on the back of the Mad Men thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the Fantastic Four kind of get regroup, follow the Red Ghost, who sets up a trap with his disintegrator ray for them. But Sue is able to escape uh, with the help of the apes because she kind of, she frees the apes because they're in the cage separated from the food so that they'll be more susceptible to Red Ghost control. Woo. So she frees them, they eat the food, and then they just bust out of the place. Very ape style. Right. So Sue is able to escape and then she warns them about the trap. Yeah. So the Phantasm Four disable the trap. They, uh, they, they chase after Red Ghost who runs to the Watcher's house to escape. Yep. But the Watcher gets pissed off and just kicks them out right into the Fantastic Four's arms again. That's like a complete... That's interfering. Right. So Reed fires his paralysis ray at the Red Ghost, and the Watcher's like, you guys won, and then he just leaves. Sick. <laughs> so the Super Apes return the Red Ghost to normal with their like anti-paralysis ray or something, but then they oh. just attack him, and then the Fantastic Four return to Earth. Apes didn't like him. Yeah, I, I get that, but also, why unparalyze him if you're just gonna attack him again? Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um. So, I put this at probably a three star story. Mm. I would give it an extra star for the Watcher, but then I cut off an extra, a, a star for the Red Ghost and the Apes. So I'm leaving it at three. Right. I give it a two. That's the Watcher, I man. Be, I do, yeah. I, I said I'd give it a three because of the Watcher, so I'll give it a three because right. of the Watcher. I like the Watcher. I think, despite his, like, doing the exact opposite of what he always yeah. said he's gonna do, I still like the character. Yeah. So I so it's kind of like what you said. Two star story. 
But since it's the Watcher, I'll give it a three. Three. I don't know, I just didn't really enjoy this one that much. Yeah. That's boring. But again, Fantastic Four is where everybody is introduced, because now the Watcher is there. Yeah. Alright, last one. Oh, we forgot to do the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Halfway mark. <laughs> every time we just switch back and forth. Dude, I feel, yeah, I feel like it's like every other week we do it. Yep, yep. I always uh, forget about that, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sick this time, so my mind is all crazy, yeah, man. I like, honestly, I never freaking remember, dude. Yeah. Um, okay, so... <sighs> uh, this is Tales to Astonish number 42. Voice the of, Voice of Doom. The Voice of Doom. But not Doctor Doom, which would make this story a lot better. Yeah. Start out with this dude named Jason Cragg. He is hypnotizing a crowd of people with his voice. Ant-Man happens to be walking by, who's unaffected because of his radio helmet. Yes. And Crad is like, Ant-Man is a public enemy, attack, we need to attack him. So we flash back to Crad's origin. Basically, he was a radio announcer who wasn't doing very well, and then he somehow got hit with radiation. Hey, man. And then he just got a great voice, and everybody believes everything he says now. Sick. Kind of like Claw. It's nothing like Claw. Yeah, dude. Claw has a sound gun. He has a great voice. What? (laughs) (laughs) Crad now has a great voice. Yeah. And so he goes into a police station and he tells the police to arrest Hank. So they try to do it, but Hank escapes. So the city goes on the hunt for him. Crad is like, everybody go after him. I need to pull my nose. (gasps) Hank being sick. Arden's Life Adventures Part 4. As as Arden ex- was explaining the story, all of a sudden they are under attack by Curly Q. So, the Guardians of the Fern, they go out and they try to escape. They are unsuccessful as Curly Q shoots a tractor beam at their ship and hauls them in. So they hide inside their ship and wait for the enemies to board to ambush them. This is the end of Arden's Life Adventures Part 3. Part 4. I don't remember. So yeah, so Hank tries to get back to his lab. But he has to take all his gear off. Because they're hunting for him with like, metal detectors. Yeah. And so because of that, he doesn't have the helmet on anymore. So Crad is able to affect him. So he's basically like, Ant-Man, drown yourself. <laughs> so <laughs> Hank does. He goes off. He dives off the pier into the ocean. But the ants are there and they save him. Yes, they have that criminal mor- the, what was it? They, ha- they don't crime have a fighting. sense of greed and or vanity. They're yeah. they're part of they're partners in the in the war against crime. crime. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh Hank manages to get back to his lab and kind of lays low for a mm-hmm. bit. So then he goes out, Crad is about to go on a on a TV show and tell everybody to take out the Ant-Man. So Ant-Man goes and he threatens Crad with a fake gun and makes him tell everybody that Ant-Man is good and to not attack him anymore. So then, he, he put... He gives him... He gives him laryngitis. <laughs> the way he does this is he, like, puts microbes, like, bacteria on the mic. Yeah. And then it, he inhales it, and then it just gives him laryngitis, like, immediately. Which I don't think... I don't think it would... It wouldn't be immediate, be that but... It would be a way to get laryngitis, yeah. So anyway... Uh, that, like, destroys his voice powers. And Craig gets run out of town. Yep. So, it's pretty dumb. I don't really like this one. Mm. I put it at two. I'm thinking of dropping it back down to a one. Really? Yeah. I don't know. (sighs) See, to me, it doesn't deserve a one. Okay. I don't know. You know what? It's not Strange Tales 108, so I'll keep it at two. That was the painter one. Okay. It's not as bad as that one, so I'll keep it at two. See, Craig was a pretty good villain, man. All right. Well, either way, whether or not Craig was a good villain or not, that's the end of this episode. Yes. Uh, thanks for bearing with my terrible voice. And my, um, my, my, my adventure story. Next week, some pretty good stuff, I would say. Uh, Dr. Octopus. First appearance of him. He'll be coming up. Also, the Wasp. Wasp. Will be here. But not... Uh, not Hope. It'll be Janet. Ah. Also, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home review coming next week. Assuming Sebastian is able to see it. All right, what else have we got? Uh, this, you know what? I feel like since Sebastian started it out, let's I have should... him do the outro. Uh, thank you guys for listening. If you guys want to read along with us, CMRO, Travis Starnes. It, that's the order. That's the order website that we go off of. If you want to read along with us, 
feel free. Make sure to read the main six one six yeah. order. Main also, six order. maybe uh, tell the people over there that we uh, we say hi. Uh, if you want to email us, Earth Midas Comics Pod, all at gmail dot com. At obviously at gmail. Who else uses? What else do the people use? I use Hotmail for my own personal email. What the frick is wrong with you? <laughs> what the hell? What? I don't know. I, I use Hotmail. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, this is a. I'm gonna Fun. have such a hard time editing this. <laughs> Fun. Feel free to email us at earthsmightiestcomicspod at gmail.com, gmail.com, all one word, no apostrophe. In Earths. In Earths. There we go. There go. And, uh, Arden wants to add anything else? Uh, if you, we'll, we'll be doing, uh, 61 through 70 next week reading, so if you want to read, that's the ones that hit. Um, or just read all of them, you know. Read them uh, with us. I have not released my Jessica Jones Season 3 review yet. Wow. Because <laughs> I have not finished Jessica Jones Season 3. You said you had like three episodes. Yep, and I didn't watch any over the last nice. week. Nice. <coughs> <coughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave the part where you say I'm leaving that in too. It'll be the bloopers that Jason <laughs> wanted. Except not actually cut out. They'll just be in the... What if I just didn't edit any of this any episode? Of this? That'd be a mess. That'd I'm be... not going to do that, but... That'd be great. I don't know. Yeah, I think that should about do it. Thanks a lot, everybody, for listening. Yes, correct. We'll see. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.